are now um, finished with the public comment section. Now we are at staff recognition. Um, we are, before we go to consent calendar, there are, let's see, one, two, there are two speaker cards for the consent calendar, so um, they are both uh, regarding consent calendar items one and two, uh, Sean Cartwright. Sorry, this might take me a while, so maybe you'll grant me a little bit more time. Um, it is important to know who takes the minutes here and who translates the minutes, because um, I honestly, I don't know if they drink or if they're deaf or what it is. If they're deaf, I can sign to them. I do know sign language, maybe it would help. But um, first you make the effort to sit there and stifle us by trying to get rid of the cameras. Then you sit there and write us out completely out of public comment. Uh, so if you just go with, I'll just do one and two together since, you know, what are you going to do? Have me go back, sit down, and come back? But um, let's see, for September 18th, it says public comments. Uh, James Lee already wrote in his, his comments to you. I hope you received them. But it says James Lee expressed concern on the new policy. That was really clear. I doesn't say what he was talking about. But it says, Sean Cartwright asked for email from all commissioners. No, I said that I was personally disappointed in all of you except Sabrina, because when I did a public, act, public records act request of all the commissioners and of the legal team and of the general manager's office and of the, human, the HR manager's office, the only emails that I received from all of you, the only person that sent emails was Sabrina. I didn't get anything from another commissioner from the legal team, from the general manager's office, or from the human uh, HR office, the only person that had them. So that was what I was saying, was how either nobody cooperated with the request, or nobody magically has emails. You all have like a group email burning. That was what I said. And so when you say, Sean Curry asked for email from all commissioners, it kind of quite doesn't convey the same you know, feeling. So the fact that you guys are trying to clearly like delete what we say, then uh, let's see. Then when you go to same meeting, when you go to um, agenda item eight, Harbor Commission meeting protocol, and then it says Sean Cartwright stated it was appropriate for the commissioners to get along with one another and to do their jobs correctly. Wow, that's kind of an understatement. I said that you guys act like children and you can't get along with each other and that we were getting really tired of you guys beating each other in the head with the Tonka trucks. And that I thought that it spoke poorly of how you guys act with each other, and it doesn't represent us, and that you guys needed to actually function as a body, because you don't. I said a lot more things, but I did not say that it was, you know, that you needed, that you needed to get along with one another. I also said that when you did this meeting protocol, that you were actually, it was another attempt to do something against Commissioner Brennan and that you should be ashamed of yourselves. And when you do these things, we're not idiots. We can tell your agenda. You should be a lot better at hiding that agenda. Um, when you go to the same meeting, agenda topic 11, district general manager's compensation increase. This is the best. Um, it says, James Lee stated his thoughts on the item. Thanks for clearing that up. Then it goes, it goes to Leslie reiterated what James Lee said, then it goes to Kim's comment, and then I don't exist. I went up and played music from his perverted card that he gave to like Lisa Fernandez. I came up and I, we had the card of his perverted little card that he gave to the employee. Mm -hmm. We also went over like all the things from the, the newspaper article. When you're talking about a general manager that draws naked pictures of employees, we play the song that's referenced in the card, and you guys don't even include that I was there? That I spoke on that topic? What the hell is wrong with you? Then, we can go on to the next meeting, because that was just too much for one meeting. So then we fast forward to uh, August 7th, maybe? So then it goes, I actually managed to get a whole paragraph in here. So, blah, 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 most of what you say is inaccurate, but, um, I made public comments in here. 
And what I said specifically was that General Manager Grinnell should be fired. Um, I said that, uh, let's see, I said that the agenda that you guys had for that meeting was really obvious because in that meeting, almost everything that was on the agenda was how to screw Commissioner Brennan, how to screw Commissioner Brennan, how to silence Commissioner Brennan, how to do bad things to Commissioner Brennan, how to marginalize Commissioner Brennan, and I said that specifically. Um, and most of the things you attribute to me are, and I also mentioned the Wi-Fi, and it says she stated two months or six weeks would be more appropriate instead of the six months. No, what I said was that you guys should look into it, and by saying, can you come back in six months, I suggested, couldn't you give it a shorter time frame? I'm like, geez, couldn't you, geez, even two months, six months, you know, that would be a lot shorter, six weeks. I said, couldn't it be like a couple days? It would take like two weeks to do that. That was what I said. But I like how the only things you get right are my sarcasm. So I can't wait to see what happens after tonight. Uh, then you go to um, agenda topic five, review of fish buying leases, fish buying fees and fee enforcement. Which is funny because I didn't come here to talk on it, but you treated the fishermen like such crap that I became allies with them. Smooth. Um, so it says that I think uh, Bernardo and Brennan for being the only commissioners that seem reasonable on the, on the commission. And then I, um, and it said that Holsinger should not be on the board. What I said was, the only reason he's on the board is because people die. Because people don't elect him, because he never wins an election, he only gets appointed because people die. That was what I said. And I just like to be quoted correctly. Um, I said that Grinnell should be fired because he has contempt for people, he's an apt, and he's standing in the way of public records act requests, and that that costs the commission money. So when we ask questions, and so Sabrina keeps getting nailed for all the money that you guys like to drag up and say, all this BS that she owes all this money and attorney's fees, and it's costing the district money. But the truth is that because he won't answer her questions, like he should for any commissioner, that it costs the district money because she has to do PRAs or we have to do PRAs. And that was what I said. Let's see, maybe I've gone through all of them. Oh wait, no, there's more. And then, let's see, agenda topic six, review of resolution uh, 594 concerning preparation of board agendas and amendment there too. It says that I stated that the item was added to the agenda because at the last meeting a commissioner asked to have an item added to the agenda. That sounds pretty stupid. Um, and what I said was, that Tucker and Grinnell added it to the agenda because they wanted to teach Commissioner Brennan a lesson. When she was talking about something, you had said to Grinnell, you know, could we add this onto the agenda? You know, how commissioners can add something to the agenda? And you said it in a way of, let's teach the little lady how things are done. And that was what I said then. So hopefully now, once you amend the minutes, put my comments in correctly, James's comments in correctly, Kim's comments in correctly, Joseph's comments incorrectly, and Lord knows who else is missing or quoted incorrectly, then you can approve the minutes because you're not doing it correctly and you're totally trying to delete us. You're trying to mute us in every way possible. And shame on you, and shame on you, and shame on you. I'll give you two a pass. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have a couple more speaker items on the consent calendar for item number three. And it will be uh, John Allen and Mary Lorenas. So, Mr. Allen. That was impressive last week. I really learned a lot on how to take control of a situation and, frankly, bullshit your way through. You see, um, the point of order that you rolls. In Robert's Rules of Order, it states that when you raise a point of order, you do it immediately upon the infraction. It's not a get out of jail free card that you put in your back pocket and hold until you get what you want talked about and then shut down the meeting. But let's talk about what did happen at that meeting. Did it end at 1014 officially? Because there's a hard stop. And we worked the numbers backwards and they voted for a hard stop. And the, the vote that that occurred at was about 10:14, so already 14 minutes past the hard stop deadline. 
Then they went on to hire two more, or authorized the hiring of two more employees for Mr. Grinnell. Then they gave Mr. Grinnell his raise. And then they paid Mr. Grinnell's bills, well, the district bills. And then they shut it down at 1048, 34 minutes after the meeting technically shut down, didn't it? Did anything that happened after 1014, is that any of that legal? Is it even enforceable because the meeting was shut down? Do you guys wonder if that's the case? Do you know if it's the case or not? Whether you may have given Mr. Grinnell a raise that legally you didn't really vote for, that you may have authorized the hiring of people, and that vote doesn't count because that meeting ended at 1014. That was very, you were very emphatic, Mr. Tucker, about that meeting ending and anything further past when you brought it up being a violation of your protocols. So, I mean, what are the rules? Anybody? Can you ask him if, if you guys violated any or if the rule or if anything you voted on has to be re-voted on? Okay. Let's see. Well, I guess that's about it. It sounds to me like you're winning it. I look at the um, Robert's rules and it's not what you are, whoever it was you were referring to as your parliamentarian experts say. The rules are not meant to be used as tools to bash people and to shut down legitimate conversation. She was about to get to the thirty or forty thousand dollars that was found in the dress in the drawer. I was hoping that Mr. Um, Bernardo would have a chance to keep his promise to me and bring up the redacted invoices. You didn't want to talk anymore, Mr. Grinnell, and that's when you shut it down. But you didn't shut it down until you decided to. So I'm wondering, did you wait? Did you guys screw up? Did anything you do after 1014 count? Thank you. Thank you. Mary Lorena. Hello, I'm Mary Lorena. I live in Moss Beach, and I've lived here on the coast for 35 years. Um, one of the curses of living here on the coast is that many of us work over the hill, and it's, uh, as the economy's gotten better, the traffic's certainly gotten a lot better. Of course. Um, so regarding item three, I ask that you please reconsider adopting resolution 23-13, and please do not resend resolution 23-2013, because many of us do work over the hill and trying to get here to this meeting by six o'clock can be extremely difficult. And as you can see, whether you are pleased by what you're hearing or not, many people are very, very interested in attending this meeting. And to put it at a time when people usually get out of work at five, you've got to beat the traffic to try to get here by six, is really putting a severe burden on us. And so I really do ask that you please um, keep the meeting time at a later date, and then also that once the time for the meeting to end is reached, that it ends at that particular time and no further um, amendments or agreements or anything <coughs> happens after that time. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, I'll move approval of the consent calendar. Do I hear a second? I have uh, some comments on minutes. May okay. I see if there's a second to my motion? I will second it. Okay, I hear a uh, motion and a second. So, um, questions, Commissioner Brennan. <clears throat> So I'm looking at the um, August 7th, 2013 minutes. Um, first thing I wanted to note is that uh, these minutes were very delayed in showing up in our board packet. I'm not sure why it took so long because we've had many other meeting minutes since then in board packets. So there was some sort of hold up. Um, anyway, uh, I just had. Mr. President, I would, I would ask, uh, respectfully please interject and, and, and have a point of order. Consent calendar, as I understand it, is if anything is to be discussed and there's going to be some concern about it, be removed from the consent calendar, be put as part of the regular agenda, and the other items that are remaining on the consent calendar can then go forward as a consent calendar. So I'm, I'm not trying to 
have you not comment on anything, but just simply as a port of order, take it off the consent calendar and make it part of the regular agenda so that uh, we can have comments on it in a separate vote if necessary. I will, I will rule on that point of order. That is correct. So, mm -hmm. Commissioner Brennan, would you like to pull any of these items out of the, the motion in the second? I'd like to pull out August 7th meeting minutes okay. and put that on the regular agenda. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, then I would call the question on the other two items left on the uh, consent calendar. Okay. I will second that. Okay, well, um, all in favor uh, on the approval of consent calendars items two and three? Aye. 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 No. Okay, if, so. Excuse um, me, wait, point of order. Yes. If, if, if there's one person who's a objecting to the consent calendar, it, it automatically is no longer a consent item, and all of the items are now subject to full discussion on the regular agenda. Okay. I'm sorry, repeat that again, Commissioner. If there's, a, if there's a no vote on any or all of the items on a consent calendar, they are no longer on the consent calendar and subject to a vote as part of the consent calendar, and each item has to be, that's not agreed to, and it sounds like all three now need to be addressed individually. That's correct, that's correct. So we will have to vote on each of these um, items. So... Well then, with the permission of my second, I'll withdraw my motion, and I'll make a new motion that item number two on the consent calendar be approved. Okay, I hear a motion, do I hear a second? I I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. Um, Commissioner Tucker said that he would like to take number two and move that for approval. The minutes of September 18, 2013. If there's a second. I, I'll second. If there's a second. That's item one. That's number one. I'm sorry, number, did you say number two? That's correct. Consent item number two. Meeting minutes of September 18, 2013. That's item number two. Point, point of information, I just simply no. note. Mr. President, I think the confusion we're hearing from the audience is simply that while we have a, we have a, an oh, agenda, yes. while we have an agenda that refers to uh, one is the meeting minutes of August 7th, and two is the meeting minutes of September 18th. Right. In the board packet, they're actually numbered in Just reverse. Yeah. So, it's, so far as I understand it, while we're dealing with a, a motion and a second on the consent calendar for agenda item number two, it actually relates to the meeting minutes of August 7th. Okay, so is that a motion for the August 7th? No, uh, Commissioner Brennan has, has expressed... Uh,